on an IV curve, what we show is up on the, uh, the vertical axis there is the current measured in amps, of course, and on the horizontal axis we've got the, the voltage. So the curve of the, uh, that we see there is your short circuit current. And down the bottom end here, your, uh, your maximum voltage point is your open circuit voltage. So that's at um, non-operational periods uh, for these two points here. But typically when the uh, solar panel is operating, it's giving you the performance somewhere along this curve. We'll, we'll take some of the uh, specific characteristics of the 250 watt module. And what we can see from that, if we look at the, the open circuit current of that module, the data sheet is showing us that we've got 8.83 um, amps. So I've just drawn uh, a little sketch here to, um, to show those figures and the open circuit voltage at 37.4 volts. So essentially what that means is um, that that module can perform anywhere along that, this curve in terms of the, the wattage output of the system. So that wattage output at any one time is the current at that point times the volts. So if we look at um, the maximum power point figures for that um, panel, it's drawing us a bit of a graph like this where we can see the P max position for the voltage is 30.1 volts. And for the current, the maximum is 8.31 amps. So if we use this formula up here, and we multiply 8.31 by that 30.1 volts, then that will actually give us 250 watts. And that's where that uh, maximum capacity of that panel comes into play. Now, of course, that 250 watts is your maximum output at standard temperature and conditions, uh, which are laboratory conditions, not real life conditions, as we all know. So that's based at about 25 degrees Celsius. So what we would typically see in uh, real life conditions up on a roof, it does get quite hot. And the voltage that we see in actual performance will vary depending on the temperature. So your voltage is, is dependent on temperature. Your current, on the other hand, is dependent on the irradiance. Now the irradiance is determined by the typically by the angle of the sun. If we just assume a nice clear day where uh, all things being equal, no clouds, um, then what you would typically have, if we have, this is our solar panel on a roof. There's our roof. And ideally, with the sun over here, we're going to see our maximum output where that sun is perpendicular or 90 degrees to the panel. So that is what we're talking about here in uh, maximum potential. Uh, but of course, as we all know, the sun doesn't sit at that position perpendicular to our panels all day. What we would normally see is uh, the sun varying uh, across the day, uh, potentially being at uh, low angles here to higher angles or higher positions, but giving us a lower angle relative to the module. And on that data sheet there that you'll see, you'll see a curve for the different irradiance figures. Um, the lowest one being at 200 watts per square metre, and uh, leading up to that 1,000 watts per square metre, which is your most ideal position here at 90 degrees. So as you can see by that chart, as that irradiance changes and increases, so does that curve increase from your lower irradiance figures down here and then working towards your higher figures up here. So that's just um, illustrating how your current is determined by that angle of sun or the amount of irradiance in particular. Uh, sometimes you'll get periods through the day, as you've all probably seen if you're looking at an inverter, there's a bit of cloud cover, 
the sun jolts out from behind the clouds and um, even where the angle might not be um, perf perfectly perpendicular, but uh, you'll see a, a jump in, uh, in that performance. Uh, just purely because you might get a bit of um, sunlight scattering from the, from the rays of the clouds. And uh, also because the temperature of the module may have cooled fairly significantly while the cloud cover was around. So that temperature coefficient figure on our modules, 0 0.4, that's a, it's a negative figure. 0.4% per degree Celsius. That's what we're talking about with the coefficient. What that means is for every degree Celsius above 25 degrees, your system is going to, or that module is going to lose 0.4 of a percent in output. So we'll just give you a working example of that. If we say on a 35 degree day here in Melbourne, 35 degrees, that particular module is uh, in the sun, up on the roof, 35 degrees ambient temperature means that your panel is probably going to be about 20 degrees higher than that. So if we said it was going to be 55 degrees, then that 55 degrees compared to that 25 degree standard temperature condition is a rise of 30 degrees. So if we take that 30 degrees and we multiply that by our temperature coefficient, and we don't, we don't need to consider the negative figure here, 30 times 0.4, that's going to give us 12, yep, exactly. That is what your, and this is a, a negative figure, a minus 12% loss in output on that system at, these temperature, at this temperature. This ambient temperature, this temperature of the module. So this figure here, that 12% loss is, is um, a fairly significant loss. And that's why this figure, this temperature coefficient, is also very important to consider when you're designing systems, particularly in a hot country like Australia where we regularly see temperatures of 35 degrees and above. And even at 25 degrees, your module is still going to be at about 40 or 50, 45 degrees Celsius. So if we do a comparison of, say, another brand of module that may have a temperature coefficient of 0 0.46% per degree Celsius, and again, that's, that's not uncommon. That's fairly standard for a monocrystalline panel on the market. Um, under these same conditions, if we do that 30 degree temperature change times 0 0.46, 13.8. So as you can see, that loss of that particular module under the same conditions is 1.8% more than this module with this temperature coefficient. So that 1.8% over a lot of hot days, over a lot of years, uh, will mean a significant difference in your total yield for, you, for the system performance.